All right. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Welcome to the Monitoring Bootcamp 2021 edition. In this uh, video, we're going to be covering provisioning application insights. So we'll cover the uh, session objectives and introduction of myself. Uh, we'll go into Azure subscriptions, options you have for creating them, Azure resource groups, and then getting into uh, Azure application insights, what can be monitored, sort of an overview of it. And then we'll go into a demo of uh, creating a subscription and resource group and, and app insights. So the objectives for today are to how to better understand how do we can get Azure subscription, what options we have, why do we want to use a resource group, and how we can create a Azure application insights uh, resource. So about me, my name is Ali Yusefi. I'm a, a senior customer engineer at Microsoft. Uh, there's the certifications and how to contact me. All right, so let's get into Azure subscriptions. So what is an Azure uh, subscription? It's, it's the core of working with Azure services. It's an agreement you have with Microsoft uh, to use any of the cloud platform services. So the, the, the IaaS, anything you, you, you're you going to be using within, within Azure here. So um, the part about it, I think that's key is the organizations can have multiple subscriptions. Uh, so think about, you know, for instance, the company I work for, Microsoft, I can have within it as an employee, I can have multiple subscriptions that are tied to different, um, like say SKUs for uh, for my company or say Contoso, whatever it may be. Um, as you can see, Azure subscriptions can be tied. If we talk about dynamics, uh, we can have it tied to the uh, same subscription there. So some of the available options you'll have um, are an Azure credit. You can mostly you see that you see that with MSDN subscriptions or um, the, I think it's Visual Studio Dev Essentials, but there's different credits you can get. The number may vary on where what location you're at and what credits are offered where you're at. Um, another option might be the educational plans. If you're, say, a student, um, either you know at a university, something like that, you can look at getting the the Azure. Uh, I think it's Azure for Students is what it's called. Uh, but if you just go to Azure subscriptions, you can um, you know get one if you'd like from the portal. Uh, you can also go into uh, myvisualstudio.com that we're showing above here uh, and look for an Azure credit. In this case, this is a $150 monthly credit. But again, this could vary by what your location and what uh, offers you have available. So let's get into Azure Resource Groups. So an Azure Resource Group, think of it as a logical way to group uh, your services. So there, it's a container that holds related resources of a solution. I've seen many different ways of using resource groups. I'm sure your, your, um, your, your platform team already has ways of creating resource groups as well. But just think of a resource group as a way to sort of have everything sort of together, you know, maybe regionally within a specific data center or, or geo. Um, or maybe based on a certain workload, so maybe dev test versus production. Um, generally, resources that share the same life cycle, like we're talking about with you know dev test and prod, uh, kind of fit well within a certain resource group. As you can see, this bottom point here to deploy, update, and delete them as a group as a whole. Um, resource groups can be managed um, using both the the CLI as well as APIs as well. So you can sort of create, if you want to, you can create sc reasonable scripts to uh, connect to a subscription, create resource groups and services with there. And we've seen that uh, within sort of uh, the dev DevOps community of, of being able to create these these ARM templates or what have you to create the uh, the resource groups and the subsequent services within those. Uh, resources can be moved between resource groups. Uh, so you can go to most services. You'll see on the left, there'll be a sort of a blade there. Um, you can click on resource groups. You could say add to create one. You can go into a service and inside of a service, you can move it to a resource group. So maybe when you created a service, it created sort of a default resource group for you. Um, you can uh, modify that you know, in the future if you need to or whatever for whatever reason there. All right, let's get into uh, Azure Application Insights. So what is it? It's a extensible application performance management service. Uh, it could be used for web developers, but not only developers, it could be used for, for, for platform admins, um, et cetera. Uh, you can use it to monitor live web applications. You can look for uh, performance anomalies, um, maybe trends that are that are trending in the wrong direction. Um, it, and in a nutshell, it's a analytical tool over data points that we have to help you diagnose and understand what's actually happening within the platform. So user activities and adoption uh, and, and metrics can help you aggregate some of that stuff. So we're looking for for Mal and wow, that kind of thing. 
Um, it has features such as smart detection and stuff that we'll cover on different um, sessions here. But it allows you to, to essentially co collect uh, and centralize data points within a, a store that you can then you know, build queries off of so you can um, analyze. You can visualize using services such as Power BI to build rich visual, uh, visualizations. Um, you can do automation with Azure Monitor, which we'll cover um, in a, another session. Uh, but you can you know, think about monitoring a platform, monitoring um, the, um, IaaS containers, VMs, that kind of thing that you can have. Um, can work with different uh, languages and, and platforms, so .NET, Java, Node.js. Um, you can monitor you know, telemetry within Visual Studio App Center. So if you worked at Visual Studio, you maybe you debugged an application you're building, you've seen a sort of a, um, a window pop up that shows sort of live um, metrics on, on, on IO and compute. Uh, you can see that you know, sort of the same thing. Those, those data points can actually be delivered to the cloud and they can be analyzed using things like workbooks and so on. Uh, the impact to the application is going to be very small. Tracking, the, the calls that are used for tracking are non-blocking. They're put on a separate, separate thread. Um, so there should be very minimal impact to, um, to your platform, to your users' experience if you do decide to implement application insights. It's key here for talking about application insights for, for Dataverse, that will have no impact at all because that's using something that's um, that's that's not necessarily, it's already being used by Microsoft, so it's it's not gonna have any impact by you switching that on or on. So here's just a quick overview of, of application insights here. As you can see, we have the uh, web apps, web pages, whatever. This is gonna be sort of page views, requests coming from a, uh, a user, right? Interacting with, say, your platform. It makes HTTP requests to web services. Web services can be, say, Dataverse um, endpoints, could be um, Azure Function endpoints, what have you. And then we have within the web service has dependencies that it may have on different data stores, SQL, um, other data stores, external services, background services. All of these can point into application insights that we see here. Once we have it in application insights, we can then create alerts. We can do Power BI visualizations. We can look at it with Visual Studio, write um, calls against it using the uh, API. Um, we can even do continuous export. We'll cover that on another uh, module as well. So overview of what can be monitored. When we're talking about requests to uh, from client server, we can look at request rates, response times, failure rates. Um, we can look at within a service, the dependencies that it has, how, you know, how are they trending, what's their response times, failure rates, or status codes, right? What are they responding with? For exceptions, we can collect uh, stack traces. Um, we can collect outer and inner messages, this kind of thing. Um, we can also collect things, AJAX calls, users, session counts, uh, performance counters for the more of the containers, VMs, things that may have an, an agent installed on it, you can start collecting um, host diagnostics and even tracing from there, right? So think again, we talked about the IO and the compute and so on. So if you want to you know, leverage the elasticity of the cloud, App Insights can help you there by sort of monitoring your, um, your, your info and then looking to see about scaling out if you need it here. You can also, at the bottom, it's important, you can have custom um, events and metrics that you can add. Um, each one of these custom events and metrics has sort of a custom dictionary object that can include your whatever properties or, or values that you want to, uh, to collect to report off of. So now we're going to kind of go cover a, a, just a demo of how to create a subscription, a resource group, and an application insight service um, as of you know, today, in December 2021. So let's get into that. I'm going to drag this over here. So I've already logged into to the Azure portal, clicked on the subscriptions. When you click on subscriptions, there's the ability to add one. You can see existing ones you have now. Here's my Visual Studio Enterprise, which is from that credit that we had talked about. If I want to add one, I can click and add and look for different offers that I would have available to me. And you can see the spinner will show up and look for certain, uh, certain ones. And I could switch in this case here, but you'll have different offers you can do. Um, some may require the use of a credit card and so forth, and there'll be uh, documentation to describe for that. So in our case here, we're going to say that we've already sort of built a subscription or subscriptions already provided for us. We're going to then go into what's called resource groups. You click on resource groups. You can see different, um, different resource groups you may already have open here. So there's already ones I have. I can, when I, if I want to, I can simply create one. When I create one, I can choose whatever subscription I want, give it a name. So I may want to give it something, you know, like in this case, we'll just call it monitoring boot camp. And 
that's key and other spaces would not be allowed here and we can choose what region we want this would be useful if you need to say store data or something in specific um, regions and also think about resources the closer they are together uh, may help with um, any sort of latency that you may have any concerns there so you can add whatever regions that you want depending on where you're at um, then you can add tags tags are important for not only um for resource groups with services as well i have things like purpose you know what is it what, what is this going to be used for like portal different ones i've added orchestrator environment you know in this case it might be like production and so forth um, and it'll, you'll have this you can also download this template for automation down here at the bottom as well click create and create it you can immediately go to the resource group here on the top right and then you can create a resource here so i can see at the top here's my subscription with the id and then create Okay, so we're going to go type in application insights. So you should see something like this light bulb here. Hit create. It should pull up the most recent resource group to use. So in our case, monitoring bootcamp, you can expand this drop down to pick the one you want. And in instance detail, pick something. I would pick something that makes sense of um, whatever the application you're running. So maybe something like Contoso, you know, marketing. And then maybe like broad so you know what it is i would put this in the same region of, of your resource group so i think in our case we did east us i'll do that when you're choosing this you have the option between classic and workspace based as of now um, in the future this will go away you'll only have workspace based this will allow us to uh to have log analytics backed uh, uh, uh workspace that we can use for for our app insights data points you have, may have multiples here if you see the word new it's going to try to create a new one for you you can also go to a a, a default one here and again add your your tags what's the what's the purpose of this one in our case we'll do portal and we'll say environment production and it'll validate make sure we have everything here and if we're ready we create we should see the resource uh, being submitted for deployment and we're here so let's go check out the resource but once you're here, you have your instrumentation key, your workspace, your connection string here. Your instrumentation key will be key. Um, if you're going to be linking this to a Dataverse, you're going to want to take that instrumentation key um, and uh, be able to, to, to provide that. Um, it's also with the Power Platform Admin Center, if you're going to go with Dataverse, um, I believe now it allows you to simply pick the resource group and then the app insights that are available. Um, you'll want to again have it as the workspace based uh, the reason for that is the the um, the deprecation here so here's creating the the app insights um, you can see the resource group if you needed to move a resource there's a button here that says move and you can choose sort of which resource group you'd want to move it to as well so you have that option there so that's that's the end of that demo so that really wraps up the end of this uh this one here you can see there's my contact information here to the right um, there's my email address as well as my uh, linkedin please do not hesitate to uh, to reach out with any questions any feedback you have uh, so at this point we'll end the recording uh, thank you for watching have a great rest of your day